council meeting, before we start the meeting, I'd ask Madam City Clerk to read the quote for the week, Thank although you. we're halfway through the week. That's right. Thank you, Mayor. When you find yourself stressed, ask yourself one question. Will this matter in five years from now? If yes, then do something about the situation. If no, then let it go. Thank you very much. Call the 25th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Berg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Excuse. Groff. Here. Hannah. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clayunas. Here. Manny. Excuse. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Ryan. Here. Susha. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Verhasselt. 14 present. Quorum is present, and now it is time to pledge our allegiance to the wonderful country we live in. Alderman Clayunas, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman McLeanus. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Burke. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes be approved as entered into the record. Second. Motion second to approve minutes. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mo minutes are approved. Confirmation of appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mary Miranda, Miranda to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Rob Hury, whose term expires 9-14-07, signed by the Mayor. This is one that had light over. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. So confirm. And there was a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Good. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum. Madam City Clerk. Um, first on the list would be Joe Rupnick. If you could come up to the mic, sir. And if you want to pull the mic maybe up a little closer to you, that would be great. And I need your home address. Okay. Um, all right. Home address is uh, 3216 South 11th Place. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I'll try to use less and not waste any of your time. I know you, there's a lot of important business to attend to. Um, tonight I'm not here to ask for anything and I'm not here to complain about anything. Um, I'm actually here to express gratitude uh, on behalf of the Salvation Army to the Common Council as well as to the citizens of Sheboygan um, for many things, but primarily for um, the support that you have offered us uh, in the past for City Block Grant funding. Um, as you probably are aware, um, you fund, you give significant funds every year to our free clinic. Um, our free clinic uh, operates to provide medical care to people of, in Sheboygan County who are without private insurance and do not have the means to pay for their own medical, uh, medical care. In 2006, um, we provided just about 998 patient visits. Um, on site, and we provided almost 1,500 prescriptions. Um, you can imagine what that would cost if um, people had to pay for it themselves, and through a lot of collaborations, we're able to get that at either at no cost or certainly reduced cost, including the, uh, working with the pharmacies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the impact of that on the community, as you, as you would, can well know, is, is incredible. Um, and so we thank you uh, on behalf of our clients um, for, for that support. Without it, we would really be in tough shape. The other program that uh, the, the council has supported in the past is the housing counseling program. The funding does not come directly to the Salvation Army for that one. Um, it flows through family connections. Um, the housing counseling program is a program that the Salvation Army actually hires the person and is, uh, the office is, is in our building. Um, and that program exists to provide short-term and limited assistance to people who are experiencing short-term financial problems. Um, it is a, partly a financial, a financial program where we, we're able to provide financial assistance to keep people in their permanent homes, either through, the, through rent assistance or mortgage assistance. 
Um, it is much more than just that, however. Um, we have a, a master's level social worker who is in that position and works with area landlords, works with many other area um, businesses, churches, uh, nonprofit groups, as well as government uh, groups to try to pool together uh, enough money from a variety of sources to keep people in their homes. Um, in 2006, again, um, we provided assistance in that office alone to 1,409 households, um, which is a huge, huge deal. Um, that does not mean that we provided financial assistance to that many, um, but that many people came to us seeking help and were eligible for services, um, and we were able to do something to try to keep them in their homes. Um, out of those 1,400, we provided 4,349 individual services, which may me mean uh, tenant landlord mediation, it may mean financial assistance, it may mean referrals to other agencies um, to try to get, th get things together for them. So, very briefly, thank you. I just want you to know how much we appreciate it and how much of a difference this makes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ruffner. Next on the list would be Susan Hart. Hi. And Susan, could you give me your home address, please? 422 Clifton Avenue. And you will have five minutes. All right, thanks. This is kind of exciting. This is the first time I've done this, so thank you. Um, I wanted to talk with you tonight because Mr. Rupnick is a good friend of mine, and I jokingly told him I can never let him have the last word. But seriously, I wanted to give you some history on why the Salvation Army has the one-stop housing program. Uh, Family Connections, which was my previous employer, had the grant. We wrote the grant, received the funds, and then funneled them out, and I wanted to explain why this came about. In 1996, the state offered something new called W-2. And with the W-2, they decided that um, low-income families were going to have to access assistance through less than traditional methods that they had accessed before. And so to accommodate that, in 1997, the state said, you will have what's called a W-2 um, steering committee. And that was made of a approximately 12 people in business, government, and social service agencies. And it was to ensure that clients were still accessing the services that they had had before W-2. In 1999, a group of us on the uh, steering committee, we were complaining about the homeless issues. In my previous job, we operated the REACH helpline, which was Sheboygan, and is Sheboygan County's first call for help. So we took calls 24-7 and heard everything, but some of the worst calls we received in the evenings about this time was, I have no place to stay. And so um, the W-2 steering committee said, we need statistics on this. So we formed a subcommittee, and it consisted of the Mutual Assistance Association, um, Salvation Army, um, the Housing Authority, Lakeshore CAP, other agencies that did not provide housing, such as Family Connections, um, St. Vincent de Paul. All these places were seeing people come in and say, I need help with my rent or I'm going to be evicted. What we discovered is that the clients were having to go from place to place to place to tell their story more than one time. And we decided we needed this one-stop housing shop where people, people could go just at the initial get-go, provide all the documentation that was needed, tell their story one time, and then the intake worker would gather up all the information, funnel this information out to the other agencies that could help and collaborate with them so resources that were shrinking daily would not be duplicated and that the collaborative effort would be best for all. This became a real win-win for uh, the homeless in our community because what we found is the homeless, they just didn't have a, an issue with housing. They had other issues. It may be a, an AODA issue. It could be a lack of what I call resources. And I don't mean financial resources. I mean the resources probably all of us have with a, a friend, a spouse, a parent, a sister. These folks most of the times were isolated. And so this uh, counselor could 
take all the information plus access additional services for this person. The um, project was initially funded with community development block grant funds given to the Hmong Mutual Assistance Association. And then in the fall of 2000, they lost their staff person who was doing this program. And at that point, the Salvation Army had to take it over for free until we could get block grant money applied for. And we decided as a committee that we wanted those funds to flow through an agency that did not provide housing assistance and that the non-housing providers would sit down and look at grant, um, grant applications that the housing providers applied for. And the people that applied for it was partners, the Hmong Mutual Assistance Association and Salvation Army. One was not better than the other as far as the services they offer, but because the Salvation has this belief of a, of a, a master's level social worker helping, we went with them. The money is funneled through Family Connections in case something ever happens like it did with the MAA at one point where the staff person leaves and then there's no money to continue the program through another agency. At that point in time, Family Connections could pull the money back and regrant it to another agency. Um, in 2003, July 1st of 2003, the housing one-stop shop coordinator began at the Salvation Army. We had to list outcomes in this grant we applied for and the outcomes were how this was going to benefit the community, not the person it was helping, but the community. And we said, well, through the housing counseling available, there's going to be less evictions. Excuse me, Susan, you're five One more minute. Like one. Thank you. Less time spent in court, less time for the sheriff's officers to go out and give eviction notices, less time for public defenders to represent these people in court, and there would be less transient, uh, transients in the community. The counseling service provides all sorts of things, emergency housing assistance. And by that I mean, I work at a fast food restaurant. My four-year-old had the measles. I could not send her to daycare, but when I didn't go to work, I lost a week's salary. And at that point in time, the housing group would get together and say, I have this much money. Another group would say, I have this much money. And they might help me pay my rent so I could stay in my apartment that month and not be evicted. Homeless services... Landlord tenant mediation, fair housing issues, and referrals to outside sources. Um, I too want to thank the council and um, the folks that administer the community block grant dollars for funding this program. This is a crucial program for many of our citizens in Sheboygan, folks you probably don't see. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome, Sue. <laughs> uh, next on the list would be Henry Capitillo. And Henry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan, and I'm here representing Home, Inc. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I'm here to ask you again to not eliminate the two community policing positions from the police department. You may ask, why should we not save the taxpayers a little money over $56,000 that these two positions will save? My response to you would be that is just not so, because the duties of these two individuals will have to be done by someone else. Who will do these, these two individuals' duties? Well, let's see. Wasn't it not several weeks ago that there was a discussion about transferring these two positions to the transit department? If you now have to create two new positions at the transit department to do what the community policing individuals presently do, you are not really saving any money at all. Furthermore, you are now looking at creating a new position, a, a liaison, ethnic liaison position for $41,000. Apparently, this new position would be gathering information of where the city can secure translators and other such information. What is also not any, a coincidence is that this new position will be under the mayor's office. I do not believe that the city of Sheboygan needs an ethnic liaison position. If you are really serious about reducing the budget, then stop spending more money on new positions that are not needed and take the proposed duties of these proposed positions and incorporate the duties into present city employees. For example, cannot the mayor's assistant develop a master list of who can provide translation services? Can you not have each city department identify what written materials that their departments feel they need to translate into different languages? 
Do you need to spend an additional $41,000 on a new position that you cannot afford? I read in the Sheboygan Press how Alderman Verhassel is now looking, going to request that the City Council look at how you can spend some of the $8 million that the Department of Public Works has in the vehicle replacement and maintenance account. Apparently, the city is not just just satisfied in spending what it collects from the taxpayers, but is also now looking to raid the accounts of city departments that look to set aside funds for their departments so they could not, would not create a hardship for taxpayers when they needed to purchase costly equipment. Isn't it ironic that the city of Sheboygan also has their own account that it sets aside money for on a rainy day or unexpected financial situations? This account is a city of Sheboygan reserve account. You may ask, then, why does not the city take these funds for their own reserve account for additional spending? Well, let me tell you, you, only one thing about this account is that the city has been spending some of their reserve funds over the years and has failed to replace the funds at a higher rate than they are spending from this account. In order to maintain the city of Sheboygan's bond rating, the city must maintain a set level in this reserve account. So if the city spends more money than it saves, then no wonder they are scrambling to raid all the other cookie jars at their disposal. Anyone can spend money, but few can live within their means and still save money. Is it fair to be creating a new position in the mayor's office and make additional cuts to various city departments, such as the police department? I don't think so. If you really want to spend additional money, then you should look at services that need to be enhanced or supplemented. I believe that the city should reduce their overall spending make cuts in the budget that will, imp that will not impact the different departments to the point where it hinders vital services to the community and make public safety and quality of life a priority for the city. When attracting or developing new business opportunities for the city, do it without having to promise new businesses excessive financial rewards in order for them to choose Sheboygan as a place for their business. Keep in mind that future businesses and or developers may expect what you promised other developers. People, business people should want to invest in Sheboygan for the right reason. The financial incentives or lack of financial incentives from the city should not be the deciding reason why they choose Sheboygan over other communities. You do not attract new residents by telling them that you are going to not charge them property taxes for a specific period of time or by giving them a rebate to relocate to the city of Sheboygan. How do you... How, do you or should you attract new people to come to the settle in Sheboygan? You tell them of the different opportunities for their families, such as excellent schools, reliable city services, such as, a, as an exceptional police and fire depart departments, a public works department that takes pride in keeping the city clean by providing top-of-the-notch notch line garbage collection, snow removal and street repairs, low unemployment rate, and accessibility to numerous job opportunities. You impress on, on them that Sheboygan is, has a history with, of hardworking families, strong values, religious diversity, and openness for all ethnic cultures, and an abundance of rec recreational activities for families. Keep in mind and keep a balance on how you Excuse spend... Excuse me, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Okay. Keep, keep a balance on how you spend the taxpayers' money. Do not spend tax dollars in one area, such as business development, development by sacrificing the budget and services of crit critical city departments. Do not shortchange the taxpayer of Sheboygan by promising to hold the line on spending and keep increasing their tax liability every year. Do not play a shell game by eliminating positions and eliminating people's jobs only to create new positions in different city departments. Keep in mind a tax cut and a lower tax rate is a reduction in the amount a taxpayer pays at the end of the year when he gets his property tax bill. Uh, I have more, but I know I don't have enough time, so I'll have to come back some other time. But thank you for the time. Thank you, Henry. <clears throat> and last on the list would be Yang Yang. Yang, would you... Give me your home address, please. 1611 North 27th Place. 27th Place. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, as Henry mentioned, um, I'm here to appeal to the council that um, on March 29th, the mm -hmm. Salary and Grievance Committee will vote 4 to 1 to eliminate my, my, 
myself and my uh, partner Jack Gabler as community service officers. Uh, let me tell you uh, something that happened in February 14. On that day, we know that there was a snowstorm on the day before, and starting at 7 o'clock, every squad had busy with the auto accidents. I had the dispatch count. That day, we had 16 auto accidents. And that morning, around 7.30, I had just finished a complaint, and I was sent there to help because no squads were available to uh, help a lady. This lady with her uh, 2007 Toyota Tundra went to the ditch by uh, Taylor and U University Drive. That's 50 feet down the ditch. And guess what? Who was there to help? I was the only one that could help. I provide my traffic light on that, allowed the record to uh, safely pull the lady out from the ditch. And without me that morning, I don't know how long because all the squads were uh, unavailable. And if we have to wait for longer than that, who would to blame for? It's probably, you know, us leaders here that don't provide enough cops on the road. Um, as CSO, my partner and I do very vital functions to uh, release the officers of patrolmen for, from their uh, duties and would allow them to handle more severe calls, 911 calls and others. We handle abandoned vehicles. We told them if they're still there, we uh, investigate 24 hours parking complaint. We issue and uh, tow snow emergency, emergency vehicles, and we recover and pick up abandoned bikes, meter enforcement, time zone enforcement, crossing guard duty, and provide traffic assistance when patrol squads aren't available. Last year, we handled 362 abandoned vehicles, respond to 1,039 parking complaints handled and recovered 246 bicycles and brought in 119,000 in parking revenue. One thing really amazed me when I see all those talking. When I first applied for the job I was offered, I wasn't told that I have to uh, write certain amount of tickets to uh, reach certain uh, amount of uh, dollars into revenue. And that's nothing in my job description. But I was told I have to do my job by enforced parking. Many, many of the neighbor cities, they also have CSOs. Fond du Lac has two, Oshkosh 10, Green Bay 13, Appleton 11, Manitowoc 2, Madison 20 to 30, and Beloit 2. <clears throat> Other function that I've been doing since 1997 is my, the Asian Liaison Program. Um, I handled the, help, the Asian helpline, which is still exists today. I would assist patrol officers doing uh, investigation from sexual assault, domestic abuse, um, traffic stop, auto accidents, minor calls, and explain simple pol police procedures on a daily basis. In the last few days, I had calls. I had uh, get on the road and do uh, language assistance. Throughout these years, 10 years, I have never denied any service to any of city departments. I assist DPW with their garbage collection translation and put it back to Hmong community for their information. I have assisted bear inspection with their investigation with Hmong families who had bear and code violation, plumbing, electrical violations. Uh, I have assisted city attorney with his pre-trial conferences. I also assist many outside departments, the sheriff departments, the detention centers, Falls PD, Kohler PD, Manitowoc PD, Fond du Lac PD, Germantown, and the FBI back in 99 when we had the uh, interstate gang cases. <clears throat> Has there been any de city department that comes to my, uh, our office and I denied assistance? No. Every assistant that need help, I always do it, serve during my uh, work hours. The Asian helpline has been exist since July 1st, 97, and it has been well known, recognized by members of the Hmong community. And I have translated countless documents for the crime pre prevention program in the PD. Tonight, you're going to decide whether to take the vital service for the PD, the Hmong community, and the whole community as whole. Excuse me, Yang, would you like an additional minute? Sure. <clears throat> and you're going to decide to take away to keep, to keep service for the 10 to 15 percent of the 
Shimon population, which is on the Hmong uh, individuals. What I'm doing here, the PD here, give faith to the Hmong community that they have someone that they can call, they can get help if they need to. As my 10 years of bilingual service, the most common language that we deal with are Hmong, Lao, and Spanish. If we have a problem with Hmong, Lao, and Thai, I deal with that. If we have a problem with Chinese, I try my best, but I can't, I have a resource to go to. Uh, the department has Spanish speaking officers, and if we have a problem with those, those officers will come and do it. Currently, there are 200 families, Hmong family in Shibuya that recently arrived from Thailand that speak not much English at the household, excuse me. And they are all future taxpayers and voters, and many of them are already homeowners. Excuse me, Yang, your minute is up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's all. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone that addressed the council. Next item on the agenda is hearings, and we have six, and I will list each one and then ask if there's anyone who would like to address the council. If you so desire to do, if, to address the council, please let us know on which one. The first one is for the change of zoning for property located at the northern terminus of Taylor Drive, North Taylor Point condominiums from class MR8, mixed residential A to class North Taylor Point uh, plan unit development classification. The second one, for the change of zoning for property located east of Taylor Drive and south of Germain Avenue from class S suburban industrial to class suburban commercial classification. The third one, confirming the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district one. The fourth one, confirming the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district two. The fifth one, confirming the exercise of police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district four. The sixth and final one, confirming the exercise of police power in in, in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment district five. Is there anyone who would like to address the council? Sir, please step up. <clears throat> and sir, could you tell me which one you're interested in speaking on? Uh, I'm interested in uh, speaking about the parking assessment and the CSO situation. Okay. Parking assessment for which district, do you know? Uh, downtown? Um, Town. <clears throat> well. 7th and 9th Street. Okay. Uh, Why don't you give me your name? I'll figure that out tomorrow morning. I'll look at which area it is. Um, what is your name, please? Uh, my name is uh, Greg Reineking. And how do you, Greg, how do you spell your last name? R-E-I-N-E-K-I-N-G. And your home address, Greg? My home address is uh, 1603 Fieldstone Lane in Howard's Grove, and I own an office, uh, the financial group, at 625 North A Street. Okay, and then what you would be speaking on tonight would just be the parking, that's what the hearings are right now, is just the parking assessment district. So that's what you can talk on right, right. now. Right, proposed okay. changes, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, yeah, one, one of the things, and I guess you know, I'm not going to uh, read from anything or, or do any preaching of any type, but... Uh, one of the things that I, I you know, really enjoy about uh, actually being back to Sheboygan, and I preface that by saying that I was uh, left Sheboygan after college, uh, was gone for 21 years, and came back to Sheboygan for some opportunities, and uh, decided to buy a, a building on A Street, okay, to uh, hang up my shingle the Financial Group Incorporated. And uh, one of the things that uh, I'm not here to lobby for, uh, for, uh, for Yang Yang or Jack Gebler's job positions. But one of the things I've really noticed, and I've lived in various parts of the country, that uh, people really don't like those parking meters downtown, <laughs> number one. And two, I think that Yang and Gebler, again, I'm not lobbying for their position, but they've really become uh, an integral part of the A Street atmosphere and the, and the business atmosphere that goes on. And one of the reasons that I purchased a property on A Street. However, you know, what, what I'm seeing is I have clientele that comes in 
and I have my assistant Mary at the office constantly looking at those meters and plugging quarters and having clientele that are extremely upset you know, when I walk out and say goodbye to them that they've got a yellow ticket on, on their vehicle, which I gladly take over. And you can see a lot of Greg L. Reineking checks in the parking meter because I, I pay for all of them. I say, if you got a ticket, I got it. They go, I don't want to come down here otherwise. So when I can park in, you know, in Yonkers. I consider it, you know, looking, looking at the Sheboygan atmosphere, and uh, I wanted to be part of A Street, obviously, you know, back in my hometown. And uh, I think it's a little bit of a, uh, a stigma. You know, I've lived in Valparaiso, Indiana, I've lived in South Dakota, a number of places. I don't see parking meters. I, I lived in Chicago. They've got them there. But uh, I think it's a detriment to good, positive business atmosphere in the downtown area. And Yang Yang and Jack Gebler, I know them both, not here for them, but I think that they do many, many things, and they create an atmosphere on A Street. A lot of business people and customers, clientele, know these guys. And uh, yeah, are they constantly handing out tickets? No. Could they do more for revenue for the city? And is revenue important to the city? Oh, absolutely, positively. But is this the business image? Is this going to attract good quality business? To the downtown area, and I guess I, you know, I'm just stating my opinion. I, I just don't think it's the most positive image that uh, Sheboygan can be casting. You know, I look at uh, you know Fond du Lac or Appleton; they don't seem to have this situation. But uh, revenue is very important. I understand that as a financial advisor, but uh, also bringing revenue in as far as establishing new businesses and uh, and clientele for other business owners is extremely important, in my opinion too. So. I just wanted to uh, to take a look at uh, you know what what they have done. I, I I'm thinking that revenue could be uh, generated in other areas other than uh, you know citizens of Sheboygan trying to do business downtown A Street, where I think the emphasis to, to many many people is to uh, regenerate it as the primary business area of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reinke. Is there anyone else that would like to address council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? President Byrd. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. And I move that the hearings be closed. Second. Motion is second to close hearings. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to pull forward. Documents 2544 and 2545. Please do. And at, at this time, um, I'd make a, re um, a motion that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Motion and second to put 2544 and 45 upon their passage under discussion. Under discussion, uh, Your Honor, I'd like to um, ask for um, the um, items to be voted on separately. But um, at this time, I'd like to open the floor to Carol Worth from RBC Capital Markets to explain what we're going to do here with these two documents. Is there a second to that? Second? Any discussion on opening the floor? There is none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And while Carol comes up there, uh, I'd just like to see everybody should find on their, um, on their desk two reports, one for the $3 million uh, general obligation promissory notes that we're dealing with and the other for the $4 million water utility revenue bonds. Okay, thank you. Carol? Hi, good evening. Great. You know, I always start off by telling you I have great news. <laughs> well, I have better news tonight. So we're going to walk through our two handouts. Um, the one-page summary and attached to the one-page summary are exhibits to the resolution that you currently have in your packets. Uh, the resolutions, of course, did not have these exhibits, and that's because the exhibits reflect the results of the bond sales that occurred this morning. So when you act upon them, uh, these attachments, along with the resolution, will make one complete resolution for you to vote on. So I will walk you through the $3 million um, resolution, the summary, uh, which basically tells you that we, uh, we had a sale this morning, $3 million general obligation promissory notes, and we took bids this morning at 10.30 on this issue. Uh, the results of the bids is uh, we had four bidders, which is on the 
Second page, you will see it says Exhibit B to your resolution. It's the bid tabulation, so you can see the four bidders. And the winning bid was from Harris out of Chicago at a true interest rate of a 3.88%. And you will also notice that the three other bids were from three different states. So we distribute this nationwide, and so I thought it was interesting that we actually got bids from three different states. The second, uh, or the next page, is Exhibit C to your resolution, and this is the actual bid form that the bidder submits, and it shows at the top the interest rates that are assigned to each principal maturity, and at the bottom is the calculation that shows you the true interest rate again of the 3.88%. Now we take those interest rates from their bid form, and we convert them into a debt service schedule, which is the next page. It is, it is titled Exhibit D. And this is now the principal and interest repayment schedule for this $3 million issue. So you can see that it actually starts paying principal in 08, and it goes through the year 2016. So that makes a complete resolution document. Now, one more great piece of news is that every time we prepare the city for financing, we put together an official statement, which is a prospectus on the city. It's a very large document. It has a lot of great information on the city. It is used for two purposes, to solicit these bids from these underwriters. It is also used for us to go to the rating agencies and get your bond rating. And we uh, have two ratings for our general obligation issues. Uh, we have Moody's rating, which Moody's did come back and reconfirm our AA3 credit rating. We also have a Standard & Poor's rating. And the good news is that Standard & Poor's has upgraded our rating. In the past, we were a double A minus, which is a comparable rating status to the Moody's double A3. But we are now upgraded to a double A without the minus. So we are in the mid range of the double A category for Standard & Poor's. So that is wonderful news. And it certainly is, is due to the hard decisions and work by administration, by the council, uh, because the reason for the upgrade in, in Moody, uh, sorry, in Standard & Poor's opinion, is really due to two significant things, and that is the continued financial health supported by the general fund reserves. And what this means is that I'm sure you're aware of the fact that over the years you have established policies with regard to your, your reserves. Your rating agencies always recognize the fact when you establish the policy. But now what they're recognizing is the fact that they have been historically implemented for a number of years very well. And also during a time where you've also struggled with levy limits. So they are very impressed with how the city has adhered to its policies. And so that's one of the, the biggest reasons for the upgrade. The other is the fact that they do recognize the uh, continued economic growth supported by the use of tax increment financing in your city, the successes of your TIF districts. Uh, you remember several years ago when we issued a lot of short-term debt for some of your TIF districts, and of course everybody has the concern is, is this going to turn out the way we plan? And we do uh, develop very detailed financial planning, but still, until it materializes, it's the, the question's out there. So what Standard & Poor's is very pleased to see is that all of those plans materialize, that debt, as of last year, was all permanently placed, and the fact that the revenues have materialized and are repaying the debt. And in addition to that, we've had a great deal of additional economic development occurring above and beyond what we had planned at that time. So this is really the two things that has led to the upgrade by Standard & Poor's. So congratulations to you, City of Sheboygan. Okay. So that is the first. Um, a handout, I will go through the second one, uh, if you'd like me to uh, at this time, or do you want Yes, to? please. Yeah, okay. All right. The second is the resolution. Uh, what, it's, what it's titled is it's supplementing a resolution that we did back in 2005, and, and, and that's because we're issuing $4 million of water utility revenue bonds. Uh, they are repaid from the revenues of the water system, and when you have that, uh, they are issued on what's called a parity, an equal claim of revenues from that system. So therefore, you have a resolution that we set back in 05. This one supplements that resolution. Again, 
the resolution you had was, did not have the exhibits. This has the exhibits attached. And so I'll walk you through those exhibits, and you'll see that the first page has Exhibit C, and that shows you the sale this morning. We had two bids on this issue with the winning bidder, UBS Securities out of Dallas, Texas. That true interest rate is a 4.411. These are longer-term bonds. They go out 20 years, where our other issue went out to 16. Okay, so that's one of the primary reasons for the difference in the interest rate. The next page is the bid form from UBS, and you will see in the center there the interest rates that they actually bid. At the bottom corner is the calculation that produces that true interest rate of the 4.41. And now we take those interest rates and we apply them to the principal payments, which is the next exhibit E. And that's your, now your re, uh, repayment schedule, your principal and interest payment for this particular issue, which again, it's repaid from the revenues of the water utility. Okay? Uh, this issue was also marketed with that same official statement. We had the description of the water utility and all their information and their uh, uh, users. And of course, this, these funds will be used for the reservoir project, the uh, uh, booster station transmission mains and other improvements to the water system. Uh, we also fund part of a bond reserve uh, with this in order to comply with our resolutions. And um, this issue is rated by Moody's only. It has an A1 credit rating, uh, which is very comparable, is a very strong rating. Uh, the way rating, uh, rating agencies will uh, look at a, uh, a revenue obligation is they take it one step below the city's general obligation. So if your general obligation is at the AA3, one step below that is an A1, and so that's where we are with the water utility. So that's very positive, that's very strong, and, um, and that's why there's the difference in the rating. Okay. So. Thank you. Please stay there. Yeah. Alderman Hanna? You know, oh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just two questions, Carol. Yeah. Um, you throw out a lot of ratings, and maybe we can put it in perspective for people. Our AA rating, how does that compare to the state of Wisconsin? The state of Wisconsin is rated a double A3, which is exactly your rating by Moody's. Okay. What is in the second question is, it's nice that we got the upgrade. Did that translate to a lower interest rate for us? Uh, the upgrade, uh, let me explain to you that, first of all, the way bonds are priced is the rating categories themselves. There's a single A, a double A, and a triple A. If you look at the difference in interest rate between those categories, it ranges between what's called 10 basis points to, to 15 basis points, okay, between them. Now, each rating category has three uh, subcategories. It's either one, two, or three, a minus, without, or a plus. Now, if you take the lowest number, let's say 10 basis points, and you say that each change in the sub-rating is one-third of it, on the $3 million issue, that would equate to a savings of $5,000. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Carol. Okay, thank you very much. very much. Any further discussion on behalf of the Alderman? Alderman Susha? Um, thank you, Your Honor. When I was looking through this, this official statement, a uh, 100-page document or so, there was something that did jump out at me. Um, a couple of years ago, I was very concerned uh, when I first became alderman that the city had approximately $78 million in debt. And um, I was real happy to see that in the past two years, uh, we've paid off more than $20 million in debt, and the city now is down to about $55 million in debt. And I was real happy to see that because when we were at the $78 million, we were almost at our cap of our borrowing capacity. So I'm real happy. I want to thank Carol Worth from RBC uh, Capital and also Rich Gephardt, the finance director, because I know that the two of them have worked very closely just as the finance committee and also you, Mayor Perez. I think together that was the financial team that has been uh, leading us down this path and I'm real happy that we were able to refinance um, along with this debt issuance uh, to keep us going in the right direction because I think that's a huge success knowing that the city is down to $55 million in debt. That's still a lot of debt, and I hope we keep driving it down, but I think that's something that really is a positive that came out of this document tonight. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Any further discussion? There is none. We're going to take a vote on 2544 first. Please call the roll. 
Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Verhassel. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Now we're going to call the vote on 2545, and after it passes, I hope, we'll take a little couple of minutes to sign the document so Carol can take off. Please call the roll. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. Consent agenda, President Burke. Ah, uh, yes, and I thank you again, uh, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and file all the ROs, accept and adopt all the RCs, and put the general ordinances upon their passage. Second. Motion and second to put consent agenda upon their, to approve consent agenda 25-1 to 25-26. Under discussion, we have uh, Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I didn't really want to talk on the consent agenda. I just wanted to make a comment on the previous documents that we were we're passing, and um, that was in addition to what Alderman Susha had said uh, regarding thanks to the people that were, were watching our finances and so forth. We also have to give credit to the last two um, uh, years of um, the finance committees that were appointed for watching the policies that we set and recommending those policies to the council, and then to the whole council for passing and watching those same policies. Absolutely. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question on uh, document 2517. 2517. What it is, it's, uh, it's a communication from the United Military Association of Sheboygan requesting $500, and finance department, or the finance committee approved it, the request, and I would just like some background information on why we're here approving that $500. Okay, Alderman Graff. I have to defer to Alderman Hanna because I was out of town. Okay, Alderman Hanna. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it was a budgeted item, uh, and I, I can't remember the timing of it, but I had to come through finance to get back up here. But it was in the budget to provide them. It's an annual, I think it's an annual recurring item. You're satisfied? Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else? Any questions? There are none. Please call the roll. Serta? Graf? Hannah? Kittleson, Clayunas, Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Ryan, Susha, Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Boren, and Berg. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Officers 2, 2527, lies over. To be referred, 2528 through 2543. 2546 and 47. Lies over. 2548 through 2555 to be referred. The report of Committee 4, 2556 by the Marina and Harbor Committee recommending authorizing the construction of a kayak launch facility along the Sheboygan River in the South Pier District and passing the attached resolution. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Motion to suspend the rules. There's a motion, second to suspend. Is there any, any objection? There is none. Please continue. I'd like to put the RC upon its passage. The, accept and adopt and put the RC upon its passage. Resolution. The motion resolution. to accept and adopt, to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Second. And second. Under discussion? Please. 
Um, this is a new venture that we are going to be starting on our riverfront, and we have a, a, a business starting where they will be renting kayaks to the community, and this new launch, launch will be open to the public. So I know there's been some concern that this was only for um, participants at this um, business, but this will be open to all, all people that want to use it. Thank you. Any other discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 52557 to be referred. Report of Committee 6. 2558 by law and licensing recommending not granting the taxi cab license number 7406 as the applicant has requested that his application be withdrawn. Alderman uh, Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the reporter committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. Alderman Boren. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I had, a, I had a comment on 2557. There was a discrepancy between the agenda and the referral. Do you want me to come back to that later? Let's, let's take a vote on this, yes. Come back to it? Yes, we'll okay. come back to it. Any discussion on 2558? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah. <clears throat> Excuse me, Hannah. Kittleson? Yes. <laughs> Clayunis? Hi. Meyer? Hi. Montemayor? Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Verhasselt, Boren, Aye. Berg, Serta, and Graf. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. I will refer back to 2557 for some clarification by Alderman Boren. Please do, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. On the agenda, it says that this, this uh, 2557 is going to the Committee of the Whole of the New Council. Uh, we discussed this at the last committee, the whole meeting, and it was decided, as it says on the document itself, that it will go to the Civil Service Commission of the new council. So, just that's, a typo. Yep, we'll change it. Okay, thank you. Please note that, note and make that correction. <clears throat> it will be a referral to Civil Service, not Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Alderman Warren, for pointing that out. Okay, 2559 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 2560, by the Cable Refranchise Committee requesting that the Council accept a check from Charter Communication for $78,000 mm -hmm. as, com as complete payment for, of the monies due the City as determined by the audit done by the City's paid consultant from UW-Madison. President Burke, would you like to take that one? Uh, yes. I would uh, move that the um, resolution be put on its passage. Thank you. Yes. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2561 by law and licensing recommending denying pawnbroker license number 1742 based on his failure to include all relevant convictions on his pawnbroker license application, his previous record of violations, including current violations and investigations and the committee standards for issuing licenses. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask to move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to adopt. Under discussion. Under discussion is Todd Jadowski here this evening. He is not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Retke. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Verhasselt. Warren. Berg, aye. Serta, aye. Graf, aye. and Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2562 to be referred. Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would request that this be filed, and simultaneously to that, I'd ask that you uh, take the opportunity to form a special committee uh, so that we might uh, have three aldermen and three citizens at large assigned. Uh, and might have further discussion on this topic. There's the, that was a motion and a second. Alderman Hanna, that was a motion you made? Yes. Under discussion. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. 
Um, actually, the Salary and Grievance Committee has spent almost a year uh, working on this project. This is referring to the um, reorganization of the city's table of organization. The mayor has been involved, the human resource director has been involved, many city employees have been involved in the process, department heads have been involved in the process. Right now it is scheduled to go to the Committee of the Whole, um, which I believe we will be meeting next week for further dis, uh, dissemination of information because there have been some changes that the Salary and Grievance Committee did make following the recommendations from all of the standing committees. Um, there has been a tremendous amount of input that has been uh, provided for this change in the reorganization and I would ask that we have the opportunity to discuss it at the Committee of the Whole and after the discussion, if you're not comfortable with the changes, you can simply vote it down at that point. So it's very inappropriate to file it, and I do believe we should continue with as planned and refer it to the committee the whole next week so everybody has a thorough understanding. I will tell you the majority of the information that was presented today at the public hearing was wrong, very inaccurate, and I think we should have the opportunity to present uh, the information in its, in its entirety so everybody can discuss it openly. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I believe that it's uh, very important that the new council members be involved in this process. Um, I would ask that this special committee uh, have a very short life of six weeks tops uh, and that we get back and that we schedule our meetings in such a fashion that the vast majority of the all the people can be in attendance. I think it's just an opportunity for more open discussion. It's very important. Uh, I certainly appreciate the spirit of the moves. I just think we need to have a more open discussion. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Lights are popping up. Alderman, uh, Alderman Vanderweel first. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't see anything wrong with this going to Committee of the Whole. We can discuss it there. And then if, we're, if we want to file it then and send it to committee or ask you to form a committee, we can do it then. And any older person that or elect all the person that would like to attend the committee can attend it and it'll be on channel eight and they can tape it and watch it there. So I don't think we'd be leaving anybody out of the process by having a committee the whole meeting on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have to agree with uh, Alderman Hanna on this. Um, uh, salaries and grievances and uh, uh, Alderperson Susha did put a lot of work behind this. Um, but I believe that uh, um, I think the process needs to be restarted. I think it needs to be restarted with more of the department heads input from the start um, that the uh, uh, animosity that has developed in some of the city departments can be put to rest and that we can uh, rework the TO and actually have some real cost savings. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Chairman Susha worked very hard on this table of organization, but there have been a lot of changes. It's not going the direction we anticipated. There's a new council. I'm afraid that if we pass this now, or even if it goes to Committee of the Whole and passes, the new council will make lots of changes. We'll have a messy document. So even I, who helped work on this a long time, can support a committee looking at it all over again and getting a clean document and hopefully getting to where we want to go. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Susha, second time. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I do believe that this does need to go to the Committee of the Whole, and there are a lot of positions that are involved here. This impacts approximately 50 jobs on the table of organization. There's been a tremendous amount of compromise to make all of the department heads feel comfortable. I think that we could get them up to the microphone at the Committee of the Whole meeting, and you could ask them if they're comfortable with what's on the table. What we're doing is we're adding more police officers to the street. I mean, I don't think this is the appropriate venue to get into a full-blown discussion, but it, it, the document is before you. And if this committee would like, I could start at the top line item and spend the next half hour going through it one item at a time, but that's not the proper venue. Um, what you have to remember is that this also includes positions um, like the deputy director position of planning. That has been vacant since the beginning of January. We have been leaving that department out in the lurch because there has been obstacle after obstacle that we have been asked to overcome. We were asked to send this entire document to each of the standing committees. We did that. We made the changes. We gave almost everything everybody was asking for. They almost got everything they wanted when it came back to salary and grievance. I don't know if there are more than four of us in this room that know completely what the changes are. So I would support a full discussion 
on the uh, committee the whole level because if you postpone this, you're not helping some of the committees or some of the departments such as Paulette Ender. She's been running short staff since January. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this whole process into June, July before she gets somebody up and running. So I would ask, give this a shot. You don't have anything to lose by coming in next Monday night and listening to it in its entirety. Um, as far as passing it on to the next council, I think all you're doing is stopping the wheels of government. Um, that's, that's not a good thing because you could start over at square one the next set of aldermen will spend 12 months working on this. All of a sudden it'll be time to seat a new council next year and again you're stepping backwards. You're never gonna move ahead. You're not gonna make the changes that need to be made. So I would say let's discuss it next week, Monday night. Um, we have not had a sign and die meeting for the committee of the whole, so one way or another we're coming in next Monday night to have that on the agenda. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Any more discussion? There is none, please call the roll. And this is a motion. This is, this a, is motion. a motion to file and form a committee. Is that your full motion? So an I vote would be to file and form a special committee. An I vote. Everybody have that. An I vote would be to file and form a special committee, consisting of three aldermen and three citizens, six week lifespan. Okay. Is that what you wanted, Alderman Hannah? Okay. Um, Clayunis. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. No. Ryan. Susha? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. Ten ayes, four noes. Motion carries. Report of committees 8, 2563 through 2564 to be referred. Report of Committees 9, 2565 by Public Works, amended Section 18-51A of the Municipal Code so as to increase the fees of, for dog licenses and pass the attached substitute resolution, um, substitute ordinance. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that we accept and adopt the RC and put the substitute um, ordinance upon its passage. There's a motion, there's a motion, there's a second, second, under discussion. Under discussion, this is part of the dog study committee. It was an increase in the dog licensing <coughs> licenses. And there were a few complaints that the increases were not fair between the neutered dogs and the non-neutered dog licenses. So what we've done is we've increased both these licenses by $3 each to make it an even increase. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Any, mother, any more discussion? Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to vote against this increase in the dog licensing fees. This came out of the Dog Study Committee, which was supposed to find us a dog park and everything else to go along with it. And all we came out of it was with an increased fee and nothing else to boot. So I'm going to vote against this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. 11 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 2566 by salaries and grievances prohibiting elected city officials from seeking or accepting employment with the city within two years after leaving the elected office and passing the revised substitute ordinance. Alderman Susha. I'd move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the revised substitute ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this went back to uh, salaries and grievances um, and the words seeking or to seek a public office were taken out of it, which was necessary. Um, there was one other uh, amendment, which is that we had a bullet point in here, uh, number three, uh, the, the last line of the document, that stated that a public official could be, could assume a, a city position um, with the consent of 80% of the council. Um, that was put in there, so if we had a situation where somebody was highly qualified for a position, that position was open, 
and the council could see that that was the best person for that job, that they could take it. Uh, at an 80% vote of the council, that person would definitely be qualified for that position. There wouldn't be a question as, as uh, uh, there would be no, no um, question as far as the uh, legitimacy of it. Um, to get 80% of the people to agree, uh, there would be no question about whether that person, whether everything was above board, which is what we're looking to do with this. A simple majority, I don't think, is sufficient. Um, we could have a council that is divided, 50-50 um, on an issue, very controversial issue it could be. Um, I think it needs to be stronger than that. I would like to uh, keep this at the 80% that it was, 80% of the council. Um, so I guess I would be putting in an amendment, Your Honor, to this amended document. Thank you. Second. And that's a motion and a second to amend the term of the, the, the vote of the council, sir. Oh, simple, vote of the council. Uh, okay. A simple majority. A simple majority that is on there to the 80% where it was To at. the 80%. Yes, sir. On the amendment only, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe that Alderman Ryan is being a little bit hypocritical. There was a few weeks ago where we were talking about the percentage of uh, neighbors that could weigh in regards to granting historic preservation. And at that time, we were asking for a three-quarters majority. And Alderman Ryan pointed out that that's virtually impossible to achieve. There was a motion to amend it down to a two-thirds majority. Again, that was defeated. This council felt that a simple majority was sufficient um, in that case. And I think we would be creating a double standard if sometimes a simple majority is okay and other times we're going to set the bar so high that 80% would be required. It was the desire of the committee to be consistent with what our past actions were, and that is why it was lowered down to the simple majority. And I think that if there is a simple majority that feels somebody is qualified, uh, that would be sufficient. We talked about an example where um, if something happened uh, with the city attorney choosing to retire and then there was an emergency where perhaps his replacement um, was involved in a bad accident and wasn't able to perform the functions, we would need to get probably the previous city attorney back on the payroll as soon as possible and um, a simple majority, we want to make sure that we can have somebody like that back to work if they so desire in an emergency situation and setting the bar at 80%. There might be some personalities or for some reason people might not want to do it, but in the good of the city, a simple majority is absolutely necessary in this case. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is much different than uh, setting up historic districts. The, the purpose of this resolution um, was to avoid any uh, uh, doubt in the public's mind about whether something is right or whether it's not. Um, I would think in the case that Alderperson Susha just stated regarding a city attorney's position, I would think that 80% of the council would have the common sense to say that is a legitimate issue and that they would not have a problem approving that position. Um, the, the sole purpose of this document is to take out any doubt in the public's mind that what is being done is the right thing to do. At 50%, we still have the other half that don't agree with it. The question mark is out there. At 80%, there is no doubt. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. This is on the amendment. On the amendment. To only. change it from a simple majority to 80%, an aye vote would do that. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? No. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. <laughs> Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? No. Ann Meyer? Eight eyes, six no's. Amendment passes, motion passes. Now we need a motion, Alderman Ryan, to. Your Honor, I would like to make a motion to put the amended resolution upon this passage. It would be the amended substitute revised resolution. ordinance. 
<laughs> Please. <laughs> Sorry. Is that, is that what you meant? Is that what you meant? Thank you. Okay. It's playing around. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Please call roll. Okay. Yes. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. No. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. <coughs> Ten eyes, four no's. Motion carries. Great ordinances introduced. Ten. Twenty-five sixty-seven through twenty-five seventy-two to be referred. Ordinances introduced. Ten. Twenty-five seventy-three lies over. Twenty-five seventy-four through seventy-six to be referred. Matters laid over. Eleven. RO number 5390607 oh, by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning for property located at the northern terminus of Taylor Drive from Class Mixed Residential to uh, Class North Taylor Point uh, Plan Unit Development Classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of officer and the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Serta, Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 2432, RO number 5530607 by the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning of property located east of Taylor Drive and south of Germain Avenue from class suburban industrial to suburban commercial classification. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Serta. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Clionis. Meyer. Montemayor Aye. and Radke. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 2476. Will be referred to salary and grievance. 2477, General Ordinance Number 990607 by Alderman Vanderweel, Serta, Berg, Meyer, and Montemayor amending sections of the municipal code so as to increase the fees of administrative costs and storage costs for impounded vehicles. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Honor. I move the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Ryan? 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? 2577 will be referred to law and licensing. 2578 will be will lie over. 2579, a resolution by Alderman Ryan approving the terms and conditions of the amended and restated shanty building ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and Central Pier LLC. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, do we need to Suspension. suspend the rules on this? Yes. Request that we suspend mm -hmm. the rules. Second. Uh, is there any objection? There is none. Please continue. Okay. Sir, I would like to uh, refer to uh, uh, City Attorney McLean on this. Okay. With, uh, make a motion first. Oh, I would like to make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Is there, and, and there a second to that under discussion? Would you like to, please, Attorney, Ma Attorney McLean? Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> First of all, I apologize to the, to the council for getting you the documents rather late, the, uh, the amended and restated ground lease. Uh, for a little background, the, this relates to the shanty building ground lease. This is the shanty, the two-story shanty building on the South Pier, on South Pier Drive, built by Harborside uh, Development and Entertainment. Uh, the principles of that LLC are 
here with us tonight, uh, Jeff Bartson and John Schwartz, who have, uh, I believe, been before the council several times previously on various various items, the uh, the water taxi and the various other things. Uh, they they came before the uh, redevelopment authority with a request to amend the existing ground lease for the shanty building that is completed down there. Uh, and it, <coughs> the, the request stems from uh, requests from an underwriter on the project. They, the uh, building has been condominiumized. They've got uh, rental, uh, excuse me, residential units on the second floor. I believe there are eight units. And they've got accepted offers to sell those eight units to individual unit owners. Uh, and I believe they're all being financed by Countrywide Financial uh, as an underwriter. And the underwriter had issues with some of the terms in the existing ground lease. And as requested through the developer that the redevelopment authority and the council agree to amend the terms of the ground lease, uh, basically to provide more protection to a mortgage holder uh, loaning money to a purchaser of one of these units, uh, give them more comfort that the uh, the ground lease is not going to be foreclosed out from under them by the landlord, which is the redevelopment authority. Uh, there are three main areas that uh, they asked to be addressed, and, and I'd like to go through each of those three uh, one at a time. If you have any questions on any of this, feel free to ask. The first uh, they, they had a concern with was the, the rent uh, amounts, not not the amounts, but the way in which uh, the increases were structured in the ground lease. These are 85-year ground leases. Uh, the concept was that the rent would be initially set at 1 20th of the then current fair market value of the land as established by the city assessor. Uh, then each five years uh, under the ground lease, the, the rent would stay the same for five years. Then the assessor would review the then current uh, fair market value of the land and uh, increase the rent to the then, to one twentieth of then current fair market value. Uh, so I understand that Countrywide had a concern about that as they could not really uh, the gauge or uh, anticipate what those increases could be. In the, uh, and they were looking for more certainty. So what you have in front of you, and it shows on the, uh, I'm looking at the, the red line version that's the marked up version. On the top of the third page, um, this deals with the rent. Um, it's hard to read, I know, because parts of it are crossed out and parts of it are underlined. But uh, the proposal is to put in a fixed annual increase of the greater of 4% or the increase in the consumer price index for the all consumers in the Midwest. Uh, so that's the greater of 4% or the CPI. Uh, I think CPI has been tracking the last 100 years probably less than 4%, but uh, in the event of you know high inflation periods, that would uh, protect the city in the event the uh, prices went up significantly. Uh, that would start November of, of this year, as opposed to waiting for five years. So we'd start getting increases right away. What that works out to, you know, over five years, as we had normally done it, that's automatic 20% increase in the five-year period. Uh, that's not too bad considering, well, you don't know what the, the market value of the land is going to increase, but this is kind of a fixed on both sides, so you know it's going up uh, 4% a year, at least. Uh, I, I think the, the tenant, the developers, probably would not have cared too much for a 4% increase a year for 85 years uh, in normal circumstances. But because of the fact that the rent right now is 
it started out at uh, $6,100. You're starting at relatively small base and going up 4% a year. So that was acceptable to the developer. It's acceptable to Countrywide. Uh, Redevelopment Authority also agreed to that. The, uh, that turned out to be really the easiest issue we had. The second issue dealt with lien rights and subordination. And this, this is the issue that really uh, tied in with the next one also, concerns a mortgage lender of an individual unit. In other words, you buy one of these condominium units and you borrow money from the lender, the lender gets as security for that loan uh, a, a mortgage in your interest in your condominium unit. Uh, the concern the mortgage company has is if for whatever reason there's a default in the ground lease uh, that may not have anything to do with that unit, the redevelopment authority can foreclose the entire ground lease and the mortgage holder ends up having a mortgage on uh, nothing, basically. They get uh, foreclosed out. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a concern of individual mortgage lenders, obviously. Uh, so what the language that's in here that was acceptable to the uh, the mortgage company basically uh, allows or provides that the landlord, the redevelopment authority, would agree to subordinate its first lien rights in the rent payments to the mortgage of the individual unit owners. Uh, the, there's also language in there that it's that the uh, landlord does not subordinate and will not subordinate its fee interest in the land. So it's not a question of uh, losing priority in ownership of the land. Uh, but this, this then allows a mortgage holder in the event that their customer is in default on their loan to foreclose on their unit uh, without having to fear that we're going to then foreclose on the whole thing and they get subordinated or uh, foreclosed out. Um, <clears throat> the third issue they had was with the default provisions and this also ties into the lien rights. The default provisions are on pages 14 and 15. Uh, the, lease, the ground leases we have down there have Two, two categories of situations for default. One is default before the, the project is completed and then there's a category for defaults after the project is completed. Uh, the city's concern, biggest concern, is when we enter these ground leases, we're leasing the land for 85 years. We want to ensure that a project gets built there that has a tax base and that it's, it's built in the manner that they agreed to build it and has certain minimum value. That's very important to us. If that isn't done, if the building is not built, we want to be able to foreclose and get them off of there and get some other developer on there. We don't ha want to have to wait 85 years sitting with an empty lot. So, uh, our rights uh, to, for default and to remedy a default prior to completion are stronger than they are later on after the building is completed. Uh, the building here in this case is completed. That's not an issue. We're looking at now defaults after completion of the improvements. Uh, here again, what the mortgage lender had a concern with was non-financial defaults. Such things as uh, there, there are provisions in here for conditions of, and use of the property and it provides for instance that the, the property on the first floor will only be used for commercial retail, food and gift shops and things like that. Uh, 
mortgage lender of a unit upstairs that's a residential unit would have a concern if, say, a, uh, a tenant downstairs in one of the retail shops started really running an office instead of a retail. And we were, as a redevelopment authority, to say that's a default under the lease. We're going to foreclose, and we're going to take the building back. Um, that sort of default, the, the mortgage lender on an upstairs unit really doesn't have a whole lot of control over, and so they have a concern about the city being able to really wipe them out for something that they can't do much about if there's a default. Uh, so because of that, what the language we have tentatively agreed to and the redevelopment authority agreed to was on page 15 there. Basically, in, <clears throat> and this deals, again, with defaults that are non-monetary. Uh, if they're non-monetary defaults, rather than having a, as a remedy the ability to recover possession of the, the entire project, we would have all our remedies provided by law except for recovery of possession and in addition, we'd have this injunction of specific performance, which means we could uh, go to court to compel the tenant to refrain from action that is in violation of the lease, uh, right to compel the condominium association to, uh, to cure the default and, if necessary, appoint a new director or manager, right to levy on all accounts of the uh, condominium association for purposes of curing the defaults and the right to collect actual attorney fees and costs in any action that we do maintain for purposes of attempting to cure those defaults. Uh, basically everything except being able to recover possession of the entire premises. Um, again, this is looking at it from the standpoint of the, the individual unit owner's mortgagee. Uh, so that's proposed, proposed language. Uh, those are the primary significant changes. There's, there's a couple of you know, non-substantial changes. They've, uh, on the first page, you see the added some reference to the fact that this condominium association was created and there was a condominium plat established on the property. Um, the Redevelopment Authority did meet on this on March 22nd, approved these changes, uh, at least conceptually. They didn't, we didn't have all the final language, but they agreed to uh, allow this to come forward to the council subject to uh, our working out the final language with the developer prior to the council taking action. Um, I don't know if the developers are here. I don't know if they want to say anything or not. I don't know if you want to open the floor to them. We've got uh, questions from uh, Alderman. Alderman Warren, you go first. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Attorney McLean, uh, just a point of clarification for me. On the property taxes that are going to be generated by this development, the landlord's property taxes uh, on the commercial part of the building would go to pay off the TIF. Uh, because that's in the TIF district, is that correct? The, now the rent comes to the city. Okay. Uh, the, the property taxes, yes, go to, towards the payment off. And then what about the, uh, what about the condo owners? Uh, those are individual property owners. Would their property taxes go directly to the city as any other property, ta uh, any other property owner? Or is that also because it's in the TIF uh, any any taxes generated uh, would would be part of the TIF, uh, whether it's an individual, you know, basically it's the same uh, taxable entity. It's just broken up into smaller components. So you got different people perhaps paying, but it's it's really tax on the building and the improvements, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's owned by eight people or ten people or one person, it's really uh, the same concept that that tax that's generated over and above what the base value was uh, goes towards the paying off the TIF. 
Is that is that's the way it's usually handled? I, I mean, it seems odd to me that if these people are individual owners of part of that building, they have some ownership there of that portion of the building. I, I don't under, I guess I don't understand why that isn't treated like the property taxes on my house. I mean, I'm an individual owner of my of my residence. They have a residence as part of that building. Why aren't those taxes going directly to the city, like any other property owner? I, I don't. Well, understand. they're they're all going to the city. That's that's the benefit but it's, of the tip. They go it, to but, the city as opposed to being split up between the city and the school district and the okay. county. All right. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Born, Alderman Hanna. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Attorney McLean, during discussion, it, this it seems like a very complicated solution. Was there any discussion to just selling them land and controlling all of this through ordinance and getting out of the lease business? Uh, not, not in this discussion, no. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Ryan? Um, to answer Alderman Hanna's question, the land on the South Pier District is not, it is all lease properties at, the, at this time. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. I, thank you, Mayor. I guess I just wondered, too, it's an 85-year lease, 85-year ground lease, is that what we're saying? Yes. What happens then after the 85 years? It just... Property reverts back to the city. Okay. And the 85 years okay. began running two years ago, and so we're not starting a new 85-year period. It's... Okay. All right. We're just thank amending you. what's currently in place. I see. Thank you. There's a little bit, little bit of humor in that. Yeah. I won't say where, but anything else? Okay, wonderful. Let's uh, take a vote on 2579 as moved and second to approve, to put the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? No. Excuse me? Thank you. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 13 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 2580 lies over. 2581 lies over. 2582 and 83 also, and 84 also lies over. 2585 will be referred to Public Works. Other matters, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 2586 is a communication from Ronald Green, president of the Concordia Singing Society, requesting the use of the Blue Harbor Conference Center for their 150th anniversary in February 2010 using one of the city's free usage days. That will be referred to finance. 2587 is a communication from Jerome Weniger, VFW Post 1230 commander, requesting permission for the VFW Wolf Olson Post 1230 and auxiliary and the VFW Post 9156 on auxiliary to hold their annual Buddy Poppy Drive on May 18th from 9 to 6 and on May 19th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on various corners and business places in the city of Sheboygan. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 2588 is a communication from Gary Seeger, president of the Great Lakes Fish Company, Inc., proposing that as the city is planning on replacing planking on the boardwalk because of the nature of their business, they would request the concrete surface be extended an additional 50 feet to the south of the current concrete surface. That will be referred to Public Works. 2589 is a communication from Ronald Green, president of the Concordia Singing Society, requesting permission to hold their picnic at Fountain Park on Friday, August 10th, requesting to be able to use the name German Night in the Park sponsored by Concordia and requesting a permit to sell beer at Fountain Park for this event. That will be referred to law and licensing and public works. 2550 is submitting as a matter of record the decision by the Wisconsin Supreme Court in Poole versus City of Sheboygan. That one will just lie over. 2591 is a resolution authorizing entering into a contract for professional services for the monitoring and reporting of sanitary flows within the Sheboygan Sanitary Interceptor Sewer System. That one will lie over. 2592 is a resolution vacating part of Lot 1 South Pier Platte. That will be, will be referred to City Plan. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>